Sounds good. All right. Hey, Jonathan. First episode, open mics. You want to tell everyone about it? Yeah, let's do it. So open mics is going to be a a brand new podcast by Jason and myself, Jonathan. Uh, We are going to be discussing cybersecurity and the Berkeley Mics degree program, Master of Information and Cybersecurity. We'll be interviewing lots of people who are in the program, graduated the program, our instructors of the program, and of course, we're going to talk about ourselves, which is going to be this episode. We're going to talk about everything from a little bit about who people in the program are to how they got into cybersecurity and what sorts of things that they're passionate about and it should be very interesting because we have a good diversity of, of people across the program. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, Jason, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Sure. Sure. Uh, so, um, for work, well, actually maybe I'll start with cohort. Uh, Jonathan and I are in cohort 12, uh, which I think is equivalent to spring 2022. I always seem to get that as a tongue twister. Uh, yeah, so we, we had the good fortune of being in the same cohort together. We had talked about uh, doing a variety of things as cohort reps. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do especially was this open mics thing. Uh, so for me, personally, while I spend a lot of time with school, uh, outside of school for work, uh, I spend a lot of time thinking about building uh, cybersecurity products. Uh, currently, I'm spending a lot of time building passwordless security product. Um, but have had really kind of a diverse career set. Um, Sort of looking back across the 12 years, 12, 13 years, uh, it's been a little bit of a wandering journey for me. Uh, Was a developer uh, right out of college and then spent a good number of years in consulting. Uh, And then from there, became an architect at a product company and then transitioned ultimately into, uh, into the role of product management, which I think is really fun. Um, being in product management, one of the motivations for joining the program was um, really understanding cybersecurity as a whole, uh, getting to meet with people such as yourself, um, as well as uh, just learning uh, all the nuances of the domain, which I think is super important when it comes to creating uh, cybersecurity products. Uh, Products, in my opinion, that are quite complex and uh, have a very bad consequence if you get the design or, or something similar wrong. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Uh, semester two, uh, enjoying everything so far. Jonathan, what about yourself? Well, I, uh, I've had a little bit of a, a different rise into cybersecurity than you. Um, I, so I've been in, in Colorado, um, my whole life and Colorado's job market is a little different from from the Bay Area. And I also didn't start in a traditional computer science type uh, background. I actually have a political science degree. Um, I guess it was a double major of political science and and sociology. They overlapped very nicely. Yeah. And with that, I uh, was able to get a job working for the Arapahoe County Elections Division. Arapahoe County is uh, part of the suburbs of the Denver metro area. And I I started working there in 2016 and uh, quickly found that I I really enjoy doing that kind of work. And part of what I did for myself while I was there was I learned Python and I learned how to automate several tasks within the elections division, which was pretty cool and and really beneficial. And with that, I was able to also learn some other elections things. So in 2017, Colorado started a new type of post-election audit called the risk limiting audit, which is a fancy statistical audit. Mm -hmm. And I learned all about it and was able to take that knowledge and apply for a job at 
Colorado Secretary of State's office. Cool. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, the Secretary of State for states is in charge of elections in, in every state. So um, I, I didn't know that until basically until I was in elections. So hmm. it's kind of kind of weird to think about considering that the Department of State nationally is has nothing to do with elections. Yeah. But once I was at the state, I, I was on the, the voting systems team. So we certified uh, voting systems in Colorado. We installed uh, the software for the voting systems. Mm-hmm. We'd handle any incidents that came up. Thankfully, they're pretty few and far between. Yeah. And then we'd also run the election night reporting. So that's where you actually see unofficial results. Um, as they're coming in after 7 p.m. on election day. Mm-hmm. And then they are also the ones who run that risk limiting on it at a statewide level. The IT department for my division was very interested in the fact that I was like one of the only people there who's pretty good with computers. And so they actively recruited me over to be on their cybersecurity team. So. I've I've been doing that for the last two and a half years. My my knowledge in in what their cybersecurity team covers, being yeah. elections as well as the other functions of the office, really was beneficial for for both me and the IT division. So yeah, uh, I I got into it through networking and um, a little bit of luck. But I think that kind of describes how a lot of people got there. Should we uh, should we close down with um, a really cool topic of um, what you're most passionate about? Sure. So um, th- this is a, a like an, an IT thing that's just been on my mind for, sure. for quite a while. Um, my whole career so far has been in government, and I, I know this is the case in. Um, private industry as well that like with bigger businesses and stuff where the IT department and the business division are completely separated from each other and basically they don't trust each other and it makes the effectiveness of both of them considerably less. Uh So a lot of people in business divisions are using Microsoft Excel to do complex automation, yeah. run as a database, do all this stuff um, that Excel is not really designed to do and would be done way better if you use the actual tools for it. However, IT departments generally don't trust business divisions and for good reason um, to actually have access to uh, development languages like Python or set up a uh, database, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like for me being empowered to actually use Python to automate stuff in, in my career, yeah. uh, was incredibly beneficial for both for me and for the people that I was able to automate stuff for. And anytime it is asked to come in and help with this more often than not, they don't really understand the problem as well as the person who does it every single day. Yeah. Right. And if that person was empowered to be able to improve their their work, I, I feel like we could make so much progress and make government and business much more effective. Um, so I that is a solution that is hard to solve for sure. Yeah. Um, and there's there's not like any really good answers because there are some people who just let people do whatever they want and those people get breached a lot. So you gotta be really careful if you do that. But I think if you do it in the right way, it could be really cool. You know, that kind of sounds like a lot of product management, (laughs) (laughs) Um, which is very similar to what I was going to say, the creation of, um, and I love to use this word useful, useful products, uh, not fad, not cliche, uh, not shelfware, but useful yeah. products. It's um, it's quite difficult, like as you mentioned, uh, to build or implement solutions that are useful. And um, maybe the difficulty of it is the drive for our passion towards these two very similar things. Yeah. Yeah. 
maybe that's a good note to end off. Do you want to close it out for us? Yeah. Um, thanks. Thanks for listening to our, our first episode of, of open mics. Our future episodes will be bringing in um, people from our cohort to begin with, and then many cohorts and even some graduates or uh, instructors if, if they would like to join us. And we're going to be asking them similar questions to, to what we talked about today. What do they do? How did they get there? Um, just a little about themselves and maybe find out something that they're passionate about that would be cool to listen to. Yeah. So um, please stay tuned and we'll be back sometime. Perfect. See you guys.